you are planning on watching the solar eclipse on Monday, I have some bad news for you because a large chunk of the United States will have cloud cover as we go into Monday, which could hinder your viewing experience of this once in a decade type event. When this weather forecast, I'm going to break down exactly who is going to have tons of cloud cover, who will have some cloud cover, and who will have absolutely no cloud cover with perfect viewing conditions. Let's hop right into the future radar and give you an idea of what the weather conditions look like as we go into Monday for most of the United States. And one big thing that we need to watch for as we go into Monday is going to be this large scale trough that's going to be located back up in the Northern Plains. And you might be thinking here that this should be only impacting areas back over in the Ohio Valley, maybe even the Northeast. Well, that's not the case because instead, this low pressure system is going to bring some rainfall, perhaps a little bit of cloud cover going into early Monday across much of the Midwest. But there will be a cold front that will push through and behind that is going to be much drier weather and most likely very sunny skies. So there's some good news there, but there may be a little bit of cloud cover, and I'll be talking about that here in just a few minutes. What's really more concerning for Monday afternoon when the eclipse happens right around 1 o'clock central time is that we are going to have some showers and thunderstorms developing back down near the Gulf Coast, and this is going to impact areas substantially back down in the Southern Plains, the Lower Mississippi Valley, areas like Arkansas even will have some cloud cover due to this rainfall activity that is going to develop Monday afternoon. Notice though back up in the Northeast over in areas like Ohio and even back in Indiana and Illinois. It looks much drier, but keep in mind there could still be some cloud cover. Areas like northern New England, though, currently looked very beautiful because of the fact that there will be a high pressure system that is going to be allowing a lot more of that drier air and even some warmer air in many of those areas. And that is all on the backside of that low pressure system that dumps snow in parts of New England over the last few days. That is out of here. But obviously, with that being said, there is a lot better weather there, especially as we go into the next few days, which should allow for really great conditions for viewing as we go into Monday. Now let's go more into detail with the cloud cover that will be impacting a lot of the United States as we go into Monday for this solar eclipse, and we are going to go region by region with several different computer models, giving you an idea of the worst and best case scenario for every area. We're going to go from south to north, beginning with Texas, and then we'll go through areas like the Ohio Valley, the southern and central plains, and eventually into the northeast. So let's begin first with south Texas. This is an area that we already have a forecast for very high cloud cover, and unfortunately, this has been the case for several days now. This forecast really has barely changed. Here's one computer model, which is the NWS models. This is a blend of different computer models that are used, and this is a, usually a pretty accurate tool with many different weather factors, including cloud cover, and we're going to be using this in every single area and region that's going to be in totality. Notice this is your area of totality, and this will be the dead center of it, so just to the northwest there of San Antonio, and all the percentages are the percent of cloud cover that it is currently forecasting, and unfortunately, many areas are going to be mostly cloudy to perhaps even just fully cloudy. One of the biggest things that we need to watch for Monday is the high versus low cloud cover. The reason why this is important is because if you are in the totality path, this area in particular is going to be dealing with, again, cloud cover. And if there are high clouds, you actually might be able to see the sun with your solar eclipse glasses through those clouds, at least to some extent. But if it's low cumulus clouds that are really thick in diameter and size, that is unfortunately going to lead to really poor conditions for viewing across many of these areas and that's one of the things I do want to mention by the way is if you are in the totality path it will still go dark even if there's cloud cover it just will not feel the same for the experience but it, with that being said this is again a once in a decade and in some cases a once in a lifetime event for much of the United States and what I mean by that is that many areas do not have totality twice in the same century so that is something that you want to keep in mind obviously travel to totality if you're anywhere in these areas regardless especially if you're back over near Houston, where cloud cover is going to be very thick. In addition to that, cumulus clouds are likely in South Texas due to the rain activity. And here's another guidance model that we can look at. This is a short-term ensemble, giving you an idea of the cloud cover. And once again, most areas here in South Texas will be mostly cloudy to cloudy. In addition to that, this is the GFS model, which really is a big difference in comparison to the other two, where it showed maybe 70 to 80% cloud cover. This just shows 100% cloud cover almost anywhere in South Texas. So really bad news if you're in South Texas, but slightly better news. If you travel a bit further to the north, it might be a bit more 50-50 when it comes to cloud cover as we go into Monday right around 1 o'clock. And again, this is right around totality. Notice many areas in North Texas on the NWS blended models are around 50 to 60%. Uh, obviously, some areas near Dallas are closer to 70%, but this is better signs overall. Partly to mostly cloudy is much better than just being completely cloudy. At least you have a 
a chance of having less cloud cover. So good news there. Even better news is that the short-term ensemble also shows that many areas in North Texas will be around 50 to 70 percent cloud cover. I know it's probably not the best viewing conditions that you'll ever see and obviously if there's clouds for four minutes straight that'll be very unfortunate because the totality path is right here in the dead center just southeast of Dallas where about four to four and a half minutes of totality will happen. Hopefully we do we do not have cloud cover that entire time but it is still entirely possible. Many of these areas could still have the chance where solar eclipse glasses are just kind of pointless because the sun might just be blocked out the entire event. Let's hope not though. North Texas does have a better chance there of seeing closer to partly cloudy to mostly cloudy conditions. Here's the GFS model which I'm honestly only going to show a couple more times because I honestly think the GFS model does overplay the overall cloud cover in many areas especially in North Texas where it is still showing 90 to 100 percent cloud cover. This would definitely be on the worst case scenario spectrum for this particular area. Now Arkansas is a little bit different. It gets better and it also gets worse depending on where you are. If you're back down in southwest Arkansas near the Mena area or near Texarkana, these areas in particular have a better chance of seeing partly to maybe even some mostly cloudy uh, sky conditions. But if you're back over in central Arkansas or northern Arkansas, there's a much better shot of even mostly sunny conditions or partly cloudy conditions. So good news overall, if you're further to the north, that's more preferable. If you can travel a couple hours to the north near Mountain Home or Jonesboro, you might at least have a better shot there of less cloud cover overall. But it's not a bad idea to still stay in Conway or Russellville. Overall, cloud cover should not be a huge factor. And I say that because computer models, again, are verifying this as well. Here's another short-term ensemble. Again, giving you an idea that many areas here across Arkansas will likely be mostly sunny. It looks to be very prime conditions. One thing I will say is if you are in North Texas and you really want the best chance of having the least amount of cloud cover, I would not rule out just traveling up there to Arkansas maybe for the day. But keep in mind, there will be probably a lot of traffic on Monday, almost undoubtedly due to all the tourists in these areas. Here is again the GFS model showing the worst case scenario in parts of Arkansas. Once again, really bad stuff, but I do not think it's going to be this much cloud cover. We may be a little bit higher, though, in the percentages here. I do think it'll be a bit more partly cloudy across most of Arkansas. Now let's head up on into Missouri, which is a very small totality path overall. Kansas City and anywhere else back over Missouri, for the most part, is going to be dealing with a partial solar eclipse. But if you are in that totality path overall near Cape Girardeau or back near Carbondale, pretty good viewing conditions. I mean, again, we're talking about mostly sunny skies. That should be really prime conditions in those areas. Here's the short-term ensemble giving you an idea again that most areas will be mostly sunny a bit more cloud cover perhaps back down near Joplin but again overall that area again is in a partial solar eclipse and you will at least see something if you have solar eclipse glasses during that time frame uh, for your solar eclipse and back up further to the north across Illinois and Indiana this is your totality path so going from southern Illinois and southern Indiana and northeastward and as well as western Ohio by the way most areas again going to be mostly sunny maybe some partly cloudy skies across parts of of, uh, really eastern Indiana and western Ohio would be the most concerning for more partly cloudy conditions due to the fact there will be some shower activity as we go into the late morning. Hopefully clouds clear out by then. I do think they will but there's still a chance they'll have some lingering areas with partly to mostly cloudy conditions so just keep a close eye there on the satellite imagery. Here's another uh, look at that with the short term ensemble and again notice most areas 20 to 30 percent cloud cover. You really can't do much better than that by the way. I know a lot of people think zero percent cloud cover that's the best way to go but it's hard to do that. I mean, a lot of times in the United States, there are clouds everywhere, and especially during April. I mean, we're talking about a very active time of the year, and so with that being said, cloud cover is going to be something that is going to be factored into this forecast, undoubtedly for most areas. Here's Ohio as well. The totality path will go right through areas in between Troy and Lima, and as well as back over near Cleveland, where there will be some cloud cover, especially back over in eastern Ohio, where there will still be some showers perhaps remaining as we go into the late morning and early afternoon. Hopefully those clear out quick enough, but if they don't, there will be many areas with partly to mostly cloudy conditions. The western and northwestern side of the state will be the best place to be. With that being said, you do want to still be in that totality path between Toledo back near Columbus. Now, this is also the ensemble, the short-term ensemble. And again, notice thick cloud cover expected across eastern Ohio. If you can, I would try to make the trip a little bit further to the west if you're in Canton uh, for a little bit better of a viewing experience. There should be less cloud cover there overall. Now, back over in New York, this area is going to be a bit of a hit or miss depending on where you are. If you're on the western side of the state, there will be a lot more cloud cover due to the fact that showers will be ongoing during the morning and early afternoon. So if you're near Buffalo or Rochester, you may want to consider going a little bit to the east if you want perfect viewing conditions or at least near perfect viewing conditions. Here's the short-term ensemble, again, giving you an idea that cloud cover, again, 
much thicker back over on the western tier of New York and unfortunately these will be cumulus clouds meaning that this will still be an event where we are talking about thicker clouds and it'll be harder to see overall any sort of partial or total solar eclipse in these areas with your solar glasses back up in northern New England this is the best place to be in the entire United States there is really going to be hardly a cloud in the sky on Monday this cannot be any better I mean we don't even have percentages showing up here on the computer model un unless there's like a couple of small areas like Grand Bay or you know back up in northeast Maine for example very limited cloud cover this is perfect viewing conditions if you are in New England I would highly recommend going to the totality area uh, again make sure again you are getting yourself enough time to get there because there will be traffic for sure here's another look at that with the short-term ensembles very limited differences there so overall great viewing conditions and here is the entire United States so I know a lot of you are in other areas like Washington or Florida or North Carolina or wherever else and you really are not able to travel to this event but you still have solar eclipse glasses handy well I have some good news for you because many other areas will be dealing with limited cloud cover that includes areas right along the east coast where it'll be mostly sunny to sunny skies maybe some partly cloudy skies down in Florida and even back over in California many areas with very limited cloud cover obviously the partial solar eclipse over there is going to be very minimal coverage overall many areas there will be like 30 to 40 percent for a totality path uh, in terms of at least having that partial solar eclipse so not great overall but you could at least still see it with your solar eclipse glasses if you're back up in the northern plains or the upper midwest better luck next time it's going to be very poor viewing conditions overall and then again back down right along the gulf coast many areas are going to be dealing with thick cloud cover due to that next disturbance that we'll be talking about early next week in addition to that there will be some severe weather next week which we'll break down in our next forecast so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel